I have my multimeter here set to ohms and I will check the input side first. This is the drain and source in a random polarity. 5 mega ohms, not shorted. <clears throat> 5 mega ohms, not shorted. They could also be open circuit, but that's a lot less likely. I'll do the same to the output stage. Drain and source, not shorted. Drain source, not shorted. And just based on those two, I know that the other ones aren't also, but I'll check anyway. Those are good. And that one's good. And the diodes very rarely fail, so most likely this inverter just needs a new switch. And then it will work. Now I did ohm out the switch, and it is indeed open circuit. I could short it together for a test, but I'm just going to replace the switch. Now, where do you find a replacement switch? Well, for me, I go to my junk pile. Here I have a 1500 watt inverter. This one I failed to repair. It has some various issues. It's a pretty nice one otherwise, but unfortunately, I'm going to give up on it. So, it has a switch. And I'm going to steal this. Looks like about the same cutout size, and hopefully it is. So, we'll remove this switch. It looks like you just press the tabs in and push it out. Mm, pliers would make this easier, wouldn't it? Get some mechanical advantage on this thing. There we go. Unplug the wires. Ah, I can't unplug them, they're soldered on. Hmm, that's too bad. Well, okay, we will unsolder the wires. And this seems to be typical of what happens to me. I intend to make a short video, and instead, it turns into something more. And now my house is full of junk, and I'm busy fixing something. I just wanted to know what was wrong. But now that it's fully disassembled, it just makes sense to fix it now. So, here's the old switch, which is bad. And this is the new donor switch. Hopefully it fits right in this cutout. You'd expect it to, because these cutouts are pretty standard. But, uh, we'll just pop this thing in. Let's see, up should be on, so this is up. I guess I'll put it in that way then. Pop it in. Just have to force it in there. One side, the other side. Alright, now we have a new switch. And this one is even a lighted switch, which is pretty cool. But I'm not going to hook up the lighting circuit. I'm just going to hook up the switch part. And here we have two terminals for the light. Nice little LED in there <clears throat> that I'm not going to use. And two terminals for the switch. Doesn't matter what goes where. So we will just solder them on in any old random fashion. Because that's all that's necessary. And then hopefully this inverter will be fixed. Well, at least once I reassemble it all. Because obviously it's not fixed if it's all taken apart in a thousand little pieces. And there we have it, one switch replaced. But, now I need to put it back in the case, right? So, I'll do that off camera because it's boring, and then we'll take a look at it. And the inverter is put back together. Looks just as it did. Normally I clean these things up when they're apart because it's easier, but in this video I didn't bother doing that. I fixed the crooked heat sinks and a few other things inside. Soldered on a new switch. And, uh, and it beeped, so that tells you I already tested it, but we'll go on with the video anyway. And, uh, yeah, we'll see if it works now. And I just gave away that it already does, but I did not stress test this, nor will I do that in this video. I also didn't thermally test it, two things I always do before I call something fixed. But this time I'm going to run it off of this. This is a battery out of, I have no idea what, but it was in the junk pile somewhere, and I pulled, uh, this battery out. Seems to be good yet, so... It was probably thrown away because it was in a pair and the other one went bad. Uh, there were two of these, one of them was bad, one was good. So I just grabbed this and I'm just going to hook this straight up like this to my inverter. And while I do that, 
I'm going to have this multimeter set to volts AC, jam the leads in here, and now we should be able to see if there's any output voltage. I'm not actually going to load this down, we'll just see if it turns on and runs. I have no reason to believe that this inverter is bad though, uh, except for that switch, so, because I did fully disassemble it and inspect it and test everything, except the diodes, which almost are never bad. So, hook this little teeny battery up to my inverter, it's hooked up, turn the switch on, the fan turned on briefly, and we have 119 volts. So, this little guy once again works. I'll hook my battery, turn off my multimeter, and set this into the side. This one is now repaired. It was just a bad switch. So let's take a look at the other ones. The other ones have other issues. But one down, four to go. Next up are these two inverters that are labeled input shorted. Input shorted, dead short on input. So I'm going to remove the four screws on each of these, and let's take a look inside to see what's wrong with these inverters. And with all the screws removed, we can remove this bottom plate and take a look at the actual product. Now, this particular inverter doesn't seem to have any major issues inside. Here's the input cap. It appears to be in good condition. And the input wires, the fuses are good, goes into here through these two transistors. This heatsink is a little bit blackened, I'm not sure why the transistors themselves seem to be in good condition. I can't see any major issues with them. And uh, here are the, uh, the two input caps, um, excuse me, this is the output cap. Two in input caps, caps, they appear to be in pretty good condition, so... I don't really see a lot of issues. I assume that these two input FETs are shorted. This transformer, as I mentioned in a previous video, has a center tap that's connected to positive. And these two transistors over here alternately pull the other two ends of the uh, primary windings of this transistor to uh, transformer to ground. And uh, then the output is rectified through this diode bridge over here. There's four diodes through the uh, uh, diode bridge over here to the capacitor, and then we have the output bridge, which are four uh, high voltage transistors, and that drives your output. So over here, I assume that these are shorted because the input is shorted on this one. But let's check out the other one quick before we get into that one. Input shorted. Let's see if that's true. We'll pull the cover off and take a look at it. Once again, I don't see a lot of major issues. I don't see any uh, evidence of shorting on these input FETs. And uh, once again, I don't see a whole lot. So we're going to take these two inverters and pull the circuit boards out and see if we can figure out what's wrong with these two. And through the magic of editing, we have both of the inverters here with the cases removed. And uh, we can now see the input stage and output stage of each one. And we're going to check to see what is shorted on the input stage, because these say input shorted, and I verified that the input was indeed shorted on these two inverters. So the input stage on these is pretty simple. It is two FETs, one here and one here. So we're going to check and see which FET, or both, is shorted. Now, if one or the other is shorted, it's also possible that the drive circuitry is also bad. Uh, we're not going to get into that today, but hopefully it's just the FET. So let's check and see which one or both of these is bad. And I'm just going to put my uh, uh, probes here on ohms on the gate and the drain of each one. So for mega ohms, that one is good. We'll go to this one and zero ohms. This FET's bad. This one is probably good. We'll go to the other inverter and check the same thing. Once again, this one is zero ohms. This FET's bad for sure. This one over here measures open circuit, so this is probably good. So these two over here are likely bad. These two FETs here are likely good. So in this case, in these two inverters with the input shorted, 
Most likely we just need to replace this FET and this FET and then these two inverters will work. So to repair these two inverters I need FETs and over here I have that same donor inverter that I stole the switch out of earlier and I'm just going to use this inverter because I already replaced the uh, transistors on this one and there's a problem with the drive circuit so I can't really fix that uh, just for some background. These are the transistors. These are the BJTs that actually drive them. I replaced these as well, along with the resistors. Eh, but the problem is the drive circuit over here, some proprietary circuit that I just gave up at that point. Yeah, I could probably find it, but it's just not worth it. I already spent more time than I should have on it. So I'm just gonna steal a couple of these transistors out to use on these two inverters here. And since each of these inverters has one FET that is good and one that is not, I'm going to take the two good transistors out of here and put them in one of these and then steal the good one out of this one, stick it in this one, and uh, then I'll have matching pairs in this one and in this one. So I'll do that off camera because it is boring and uh, then get back to you. It has been a few days but I do have all four of these inverters repaired. Uh, I have not uh, tested them fully yet and that won't be in this video. but. There were more things wrong with them than I expected. The front two here have uh, the knobs on them. The back two do not. I had to go buy some hardware for it. Cost a dollar something total, not too bad. This one also needed new fuses. And there were more bad components than I expected laying in a pile over here. Bad switch, some bad input and output FETs. But otherwise, they do seem to work again. So that is these four inverters. They're not particularly valuable, and I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with them at this point. I might try some sort of project with them or something. But in the meantime, we have one left. There is this one. And this is a 750 watt inverter, supposedly. I'm a lot more interested in this one. And uh, once I fix this, I actually plan on keeping it. It's kind of a nice handy form factor. Um, I guess I should open it up and inspect it before I decide to keep it or not. But let's do that. Move these out of the way. And bring this one in frame. So. This is a Schumacher 750 watt inverter, also broken. Looks like they use the same knobs on it, I guess they're interchangeable, which is nice. And it looks like there are Phillips screws in here to hold it together. Not sure how this actually works, if there's something hidden under the feet or not, but let's just start, start taking fasteners out. And uh, if you take enough fasteners out of something, it's going to fall apart, even if you have no idea what you're doing. It turns out that there are indeed screws underneath these feet. So you pry these rubber feet off and then you can get your screwdriver in there. Kind of an interesting construction. Now with all the fasteners removed we can just kind of pry this top off and take a look inside. Looks like there are inverter guts. Yeah, what do you expect? So over here it's kind of interesting. This is a rather intricate circuit board for the controls up on top and the display. Seems a little unnecessary, but another thing that I want to mention is that the USB port does not run off of an LDO, a linear regulator. This runs off of a switching circuit. They didn't have to do that, but that is a far superior way to do it. On, on these other ones are like that too, the 410 watt ones. So. I think that these inverters are actually constructed better than most in their class. Looks like they have a little shield on here. And, uh, oh, look at that. It looks like they gave you a hard drive. No, I just stuck that in there. So here's the uh, actual inverter stuff. Looks pretty standard. Input FETs, diodes, output FETs, two transformers. Not a whole lot to talk about. It uh, is pretty standard for an inverter. But I need to take it apart a little bit more because it doesn't work. So. Looks like there are a couple of Phillips screws in here that hold something together. Eh, I don't know what, but I'm going to take those out and uh, see if I can pull this whole circuit board out. With those screws removed and this unplugged, I'm just going to tip this whole thing up so we can see what's on the bottom. And that's pretty interesting. It's actually a solid extrusion with the circuit board slid inside. And 
the circuit board has to uh, be attached somehow so that I can slide it out. It might just be connected in by the uh, bolts that bolt the heat sinks to the FETs. So I will take those out, but I rather like this construction, really. It uh, works pretty efficiently considering that they stuck it in a plastic case. So I'm going to remove the circuit board from this heat sink assembly and we can actually look at it and see what's wrong with it. Well, I opened it up, took it all apart, and tried to figure out what was wrong. I looked at all the FETs, all the capacitors, all the connections, everything I could think of, and I couldn't find anything. Then I realized that, you know what, I never actually tried this to see if it worked in the first place. And apparently, this inverter already works, at least to some capacity. So, yeah, whenever you acquire something that is supposed to be broken, yeah, maybe it's a good idea to test it first, huh? So, anyway, I have this connected up to my battery just through these little alligator clips. Little dinky battery over there. I have my multimeter leads plugged into the output of it. And I'll see if I can get the multimeter and this display in frame at once. Uh, I guess you can kind of see them. So I will uh, connect up the battery. Battery's connected, nothing's happening. Once I turn it on, it turns on. And it outputs 120 volts. And now I can uh, select the display between the different modes. 12 volts input, 120 volts output, 0 watts. And it's quite possible something else doesn't work in this thing, but I'm just going to reassemble it and then test it. So, we've now looked at all of these inverters that I received in the mail. And this was just a, a quick video, I'm not sure how quick it was, but a video to uh, just uh, show me going through a bunch of different inverters and uh, to thank you for sending these. So, thanks.